You mentioned hemp. Uh, it gets kind of a bad name mm -hmm. for, for various reasons, but it's also been known kind of as a superfood. Can you talk a little bit about well, that? You know, there's some new evidence that uh, taking the, the hemp derivatives, um, especially in a raw form and juiced, uh, seems to have some very potent natural antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties. I think the problem when you cook it and it's high in, in certain chemicals, uh, in hemp itself there's not anything present that's going to cause someone to get high, if you will. But if they're using mm -hmm. it as derivatives to make you know, the, the uh, marijuana and so forth, of course then they burn it and chemically when you burn it there's, there's some toxins involved and you lose the benefits per se except for the individual gets high. So I, you know, I, I think that uh, Hemp is a good quality protein, uh, provided that you're not allergic to it. Uh, you know, just like with any nut or seed, you know, you should go about a, a good delayed food allergy test and make sure your body's compatible with it. And uh, once that's uh, determined, then I think it's a great source of natural protein mm -hmm. in combination with a variety of foods. You know, don't depend on one single food. But there are cultures, uh, the New Guinea natives, that eat sweet potatoes in their leaves. And for centuries, muscular, strong people, they get all the protein they need. Uh, from only 3% protein, 3% fat, and 96% complex carbohydrates. When you see pictures when they're muscular, they're strong. They can run up trees. They're so strong. Uh, <laughs> they suffer, suffer from uh, famine, though. There's times when there's droughts and they don't get enough food. Uh, and that's really the problem with protein deficiency is not getting enough food to meet your caloric needs. But you meet your caloric needs on whole foods, you're going to get a superior source of protein.